Hello, my name is Steve from APC. So now let's introduce the Seaman Management Case Study Exam. Now of course, from 2016 onwards, the gateway for the SIM exams will be to test the management case study rather than just a simple combination of the E2, F2 and P2. And of course, I know some of you have already passed these three papers I've mentioned before, or perhaps some of you, you haven't passed those exams, you haven't studied those exams before, but actually you've got exemption from those papers, and that's the reason why you're here watching this recording. So, what does the 2016 SIMA management case study exam look like then? The first of which, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna analyze the exam itself. This is the three hour exam, it's all computer based exams, and that means that your scripts will be marked by a human being, and that so calls the marker or examiner. So, the three hour exam total marks is to be 150 marks, which will be divided into four to five individual tasks, in which you have to attempt, you have to attempt all of these tasks. Otherwise, you can't pass the exam. So, remember, there will be 150 marks in total, and you have to get at least 60% of the marks in the exam. That does not mean that you have to get 60 marks so that you can pass the exam, but rather, you should get at least 80 marks in total in order to pass the exam. So, to me, it's a little bit challenging but to be perfectly honest with you, that the similar case to the exams is not that difficult. Trust me, it's not that difficult if you follow our pace. So, in addition to that, what you have to do is to pass one third of the competency framework requirements that is set by SIMA. But the question for that is, what is competency framework? Well, competency framework is just to be a set of requirements set by SIMA. So there will be four requirements there. First of which is the technical skills, and then business, and then people, and then finally the leadership skills. But the question is, what are they then? So let me give you an example. If you were to invest your money, for example, $1 million into India to set up a factory, the technical skills would be to see whether or not this investment opportunity would give you attractive return in order to satisfy the shareholders' needs. So, for example, after I've invested a million dollars into India, I can get perhaps three million dollars back. So, from that perspective, then I can calculate the required return. For example, using the NPV analysis, internal rate of return, that would be a technical skills. Alternatively, we can apply different costing techniques in setting up the costs for each of these products in turn. For example, we're going to use the absorption costing system, or perhaps this is the techniques. Alternatively, we can use the activity-based costing, or perhaps we're going to use the target costing approach. So, that would be the technical skills. And of course, in the management case of the exams, the technical part will be mainly based upon the P2, which is the Advanced Management Accounting Studies. And of course, some of them will be in the E2, and some of them will be in the F2 syllabus. But main parts within the syllabus will be in the P2. And of course, during our course, we will go through those knowledge bit by bit, don't worry. The second skill is the business skills. So that means, for example, you invest a million dollars into India in setting up a factory. Perhaps there will be some of the factors that will influence your decision. For example, the political factors. What if they increase their tax rate in the future? And what if one party wins over another? And then perhaps they decide to nationalise your company, perhaps. Or perhaps there will be a high inflation in that particular area, and certainly it will impact on the supply of labour as well. 
So you need to consider into those factors. Per uh, perhaps you're going to use the pest analysis, or we can call it as the pest soil analysis, political factors, economic factors, social, technological factors to analyse the business environment. That's the business skills. And alternatively, you can use the Porter's Five Forces model, for example, to identify and evaluate the power of the competitors, of the supplier, etc. Yes, that will be the business skills they have to understand. And of course, those skills will be mainly based upon the E2 syllabus of your study before. And of course, as I said, don't worry, we will go through that when we come to it. The third skill is people skills, and that means in order to set to a factory in, a, in India, for example, you have to maintain or you know, deal with different stakeholders in that local area, for example, the employees, customers, government. So how are we going to deal with them? That's the people skills. And finally, leadership skills. That means whether or not you can be a leader, whether or not you can lead the company into success. So, for example, whether or not you can uh, go for the correct choice. For example, setting up the factory in India rather than setting up arrangements with the local suppliers or perhaps the local partner to jointly develop your business. So by whichever option that you're going to choose, you have to evaluate it. As I said to my students again and again, there will be no right or wrong in the world, in the business world. You have to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages for each of these options that you are going to choose and to see whether or not the advantages is outweighing the disadvantage uh, that this option uh, will give you. So that's very, very important. And of course, we'll persuade that to the board, um, I mean, using those analyses that we've done before. So that's the competency framework. And the examiner said you have to pass at least one third of that competency framework. There will be several marks related to each of these requirements in turn. You have to get uh, one third of those at least. So not only are you going to get at least 60% of the marks, which is 80 in total, or more than 80, and secondly, you have to pass one third of the competency frameworks so that you can pass the SEMA management case study exams. Okay. So when you seek the exam then, of course, in 2016 onwards, February, May, August and November, you can seek those exams. Just book your exams uh, via your MySimo account, Pews and View Centre, so you can do that. And finally, how APC can help. And of course, APC is the SEMA approved learning provider. And we will provide a range of services in order to help with your exam success. First of all, we will give you the three levels of study notes. The first level, summarising the knowledge that you've learned into E2, P2 and F2 of your syllabus. And then level two notes is we will quickly apply this knowledge that we've learned into the current case that the examiner has given me. And thirdly, we are going to go through that case using mock exams, uh, prediction questions, etc. So three level study notes covering all of these aspects that you need to know in order to pass the exam. And secondly, we will have a set of pre-recorded high quality videos. First of it, summarising the knowledge about the F2, E2 and P2. And then secondly, going through the case in much detail. And of course, we will have the live online sections with our expert tutor going through the case, going through the knowledge again in order to stress in your business understanding. So that will be very, very important indeed. And then of course, we will have the mock exams as well in order to prepare yourself into uh, how to tackle the case studies in the actual exam environment. And of course, we will mark it for you and provide you with the individual feedback. Okay, so that's how APC can help with your exam success. So look forward to seeing you in the actual class. APC, accounting for your future.